the tech. Myself, thousands of thrill seeking fans gathered at 20 to witness a record breaking, this breathtakingly third and action packed stunt spectacular. As the end gets underway, it's a big well for the Thuric Ballet Marzen Majoress. Procession some may come. You gay? Nothing short of the star to see again, Eddie. I mean, I'm not even gonna ask you if you're nervous, because I know you've got, got a little nerve for the action actually sh 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 It's not a road racing motorcycle, so I can't get the speed coming from the corner. So I've got the rockets to give me an extra 30 pound thrust on either side to get me up to the speed coming out of the corner. Hopefully I should be coming out of the corner about 120 to 100. And then speed, as I take, I'd be about 110. And then on touchdown about 80, 85. So an awesome fright. That's right. <laughs> um, I, was, I mean, for the last couple of minutes, we've been walking along this, and to get over this, this entire thing is, is unbelievable. I mean, well, this, when well, you this, actually stand there. <laughs> well, this is just cars. I've what? got another 17 to put in you. Yeah, okay, give me this a little bit of it. Yeah, this is the kid stuff. Good. Oh, it's got to be down there, is it? That's right. Good. Oh, well, we'll keep walking then. Yeah, it's a long We're, way when we start walking. Now, listen, you, you've reached. Oh. In the back, voice of our show commenter, Al, giving the fans the inside information on the stunts. The actual man on camera is Ian Pache. Like is Taylor. In explosive expert. Often he's climbing into is lined with high explosives. Ha! The secret in the recipe's never complete without a little gasoline. Now let's join Alan for the countdown and the action. There we go. Okay, the ten lights are on now. Watch yourself there, Anna. Get right out of the way. The girls are just keeping right away. Now those lights going down. Four, three, two, one. Da Whoa! And we've got a misfire on it. Anna, just don't get in too close. Can we get a fire? Whoa! Well, I tell you what. Ian has come out on the floor and he's taking a bit of a bang. Let's just see what these all right girls. Let's get in there. They're trying to get the fire out as quickly as they can. Well, that has obviously gone wrong. He's hit the deck. He's all right, he's getting to his feet. He's obviously taking a bit of a bang, but he's okay. He gets up, ladies and gentlemen. Ian Page there. Ian Page, he went a little bit on the wrong side, but he gets to his feet. He leaves his arm in the air. <laughs> he's okay. That's well well done, Ian. Well, Certainly gets a bang out of life, doesn't he? Yeah, he's okay. Time now for your driving lesson. You've seen this type of stunt in the Bond films. But here's a chance for you fans to see it close up. The talents of Steve Street. wasn't done on purpose, he almost lost it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is unbelievable. The guy on the front is JJ Williams. He's gone in. In goes young Dave, down comes the car. Ladies and gentlemen, the two-wheel driving with the two guys on the side. Your appreciation for Steve, JJ and Dave. And how about that for driving? And that is beautiful two-wheel driving from Steve Street. Uh, anybody feeling a pain getting a 
Knock, knock, knock. Anyone in? Hello? Ah, there you are. How you doing? All right, thank you. Okay, what are you going to do this afternoon? Uh, a rider's revenge and a big hoof of fire. You're not? Yes. And what does, what, what does that mean, exactly? A rider's revenge is where Gus holds a ramp up and we jump it. Uh -huh. And the hoop is a big hoop with on fire. Now, you must have been doing this for quite a long time from the size of you. Yes. How long have you been doing this? One and a half years. Good God! You must have started when you were this big, then. Huh? No. No? Well, I know you've, you've all come here, really, to be in the disco, right? No? Yes. Huh? What's your name? Matthew Gale. Matthew, you're a little bit bigger here. Yeah. Uh, have you been doing it longer? Yeah, about six, seven years. Do you, do you want to eventually become a stuntman in the movies and things like that? Is that why you're doing this? Well, or? I'd like to, but, you know, it's a bit of a high hope. Uh -huh. And who do you think is the best in the world? Eddie. The Red Helmets. Let's check them out. It's action time. Trained by Gus Scott, these young fellas have got some nerve. The Riders' Revenge. John H. 9. Carl H. 8. David H. 7. And the youngest member of the team, Scott, age 6. The big hoop and the action continues. Jeff, a ripe old age 12, vintage tone, and Carl, age 8. About to feel the heat, Matt Gale, age 14, and the fence of fire. Look out. Whatever possessed you to, to go up to the top of that awesome looking crane and jump off? And what else? Oh, explain to, to the people what you'll be doing exactly. Uh, well, what in actual fact will happen, uh, you will see me getting to the aerial platform, yeah. which will then be raised to its full extent, which is about 105 feet, which is the equivalent of a 12 story building. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Um, <laughs> that's about a yeah, 12 story building. Right. So uh, when I'm in position, uh, I will then be set on fire. I'm covered from head to roll, foot. Roll you know. that by me slowly. <laughs> when you're in position, they're going to set you on fire. That's right. Uh, I'm actually covered with a, 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 a fire jelly <laughs> oh, that's from head to foot. I've got smoke, a fireproof clothing. Do you smoke? No, I don't. Fireproof. No, I've okay. given it up. I've right. given it up. I want to live till I'm nice and old. <laughs> so you become the human barbecue, right? That's right. And then what yeah, happens? yeah. Um, we allow the the jelly to, to really burn mm -hmm. to, to basically as as long as I can stand the heat. Um, and then the when, it, when, it, when it gets too hot, <laughs> when it gets too hot, then I, I've got to dive. Uh, they can't put me out at the top. Into the ocean. So I've got to dive to the bottom to be put out. Basically, the, oh. the, the impact as I'm going into the falling rig should put the flames out. Right. If they don't, then again, I might have a little problem. But uh, is this your primary occupation, or, or have I not seen you in films? I mean, I just you look that little bit familiar to me. I've been in films, but ah. you wouldn't have seen me. In usually Germany, because I'm a, <laughs> I'm a prof uh, I, I do stunt work uh -huh. so therefore I'm usually disguised as somebody else or I'm being somebody else not my, not me what about nerves now have you passed that stage or is it always a little bit nervous when no the um, you don't I don't think you ever pass that stage really um, your nerves really that the, the fact that you're nervous is what actually should stop you killing yourself Melvin Harvey said he may have some problems. Don't think he anticipated that.
There's Melvin. You earned it. a young man now that probably sends shudders of fear through many an insurance company because he's a professional car crasher and his name is Steve. Steve, hello. Hi. Tell me something. Um, you crash cars seven days a week, is that right? Yeah, seven days a week. Uh, British tours last for roughly six months, so we get through two cars a night, seven Which, nights a week. Right, so that's something like six, seven hundred cars a year. Yeah. We do where, where do you find the cars, for one thing? <laughs> uh, just the local wreckers. Normally uh, like to sponsor us on a show such as this. And they like to have their name on the side of the car. Ah, uh, I see. And you've been doing this for eight years? Yeah. Which means you have wrecked something like uh, 50,000 50, cars or something, right? Well, I don't know about 50,000, but I've wrecked a fair few. Yeah. Now, tell me, do you think the public has any kind of uh, um, special reason for watching this? Do you think that they get their aggression uh, uh, out of their system by watching you do the damage? Uh, I don't know. You see, you see a car going towards a ramp towards, to uh, hit another car. And uh, as it slowly gets faster and faster, people think he's not going to hit that, you know, and there's no way he's going to hit that car at that speed. And then you hit it, and it's like, it's like a big release. By now, I imagine you have absolutely no no fear for this type of thing. You must kind of do it oh, in yeah. your sleep, no? No, I do have lots of fear. Really? Yeah. Because I would have thought that, you know, after eight years, but then it, it, that must be an awesome sight to see somebody coming right at you like that. No, it's uh, a case of the cars, really. I mean, you can never tell which way a car's going to bend. You can uh, to a point. Mm -hmm. It's a risk, but it's a calculated risk. It's 2%, you know. It could go wrong. Now, tell me, Steve, uh, when you get these cars, you reinforce them inside before... No. N nothing like that? The car is completely boxed standard. Just see me do two crashes today. I'll do a crash rollover, and all I'll be wearing is a lap strap. There's no roll cage in the car. Happen. Now this pretty lady is Sue Kelly. Sue is a human cannonball. The timed fuse just lit will release her safety net after just 90 seconds. She's got to get into that cannon, be fired, land, and then get off the net before it collapses.
Well done, Sue. Now, quickly, out of the net. If not, she's going to have a pretty hard tumble. Come on. Come on, quickly, Sue. Time's running out. Whoa. A close shave. Eddie Kidd, the World Motorcycle Long Jump Champion. Sweeties. The footrest wheel. The side saddle wheel. Standing on the seat wheelie. Well, here it is, the arrival of the machine. A streamlined motorcycle built to stay tough. A motorcycle that has to withstand tremendous impact as it takes to the air at hopefully 110 miles per hour. A machine built to break the world record by the world champ. Eddie has got to clear 32 cars and break the 200-foot barrier to get what he wants most. Well, this is what the fans have been waiting for. A new world record. Will he or won't he? On goes the power. In towards the second Round the, the bend. bend. Here we go. He's lined up. He's got the power on. And he's off. There In the air. Right. Look at that bounce. Mm, I know Eddie. He's not going to settle for that one. Well, Here he comes again. He's, he's got his head down now. Right. He's... he's nope, it didn't look right. That speed, it's got to be spot on. Gonna try again. He's on the move. It looks like a go. This is the world record attempt. He's faster than before. Here he comes. He's got the power on. This looks good. And no, not quite. Oh, what happened to the did you see the wheel? And he's in the barrier. Obviously, he's come off the machine. The straw's on fire. I have a feeling that there might have been a bit of trouble there with that back brake or something because he didn't stop. He went right into the back. There's the bike. I'll probably have to examine that very carefully. Frantic activity. They've got him there on the stretcher. Debbie, his wife, obviously very concerned. He's saying he's all right.
Well, here we are. I think a touch of Murphy's Law. If it'll go wrong, it'll go wrong. Uh, if it was uh, right every single time, then there'd be no suspense in the matter. Last time I saw you, you were disappearing in a cloud of smoke and flames at a bunch of boxes. Uh, why don't you take it from there? What happened? Uh, well, everything went wrong, really. Uh, I didn't have enough speed. <clears throat> that was you... because of the, uh, the well, rockets. Right, the rockets uh, failed. They fired on me as I was going for a run. Uh, so I, I took the whole lot of the rockets off and I went for it. I was probably only travelling about uh, 91 miles per hour when I needed to be doing at least 105. Uh, and I just didn't go over it. And as soon as I landed on the last one, I didn't have enough speed and I saw I just got a bit of a blackout. And they ended up, next thing I know, I was in the boxes. I got the impression that the ramps kept buckling every time you landed on them as well. Did that make you nervous? Uh, well, not really. Uh, I knew I could do the distance because I've done it in training. Uh, but the thing that w was going wrong is that I'm jumping uphill. If that would have been flat, I would have got over it no problem whatsoever. Speaking of nerves, were you nervous? Yeah, I was nervous on this because it was what he's normally done. Of course, that beautiful lady being Mrs. Kidd, I, I call her Biscuit, we all know her as Debbie. Uh, I, I, what, what does uh, the future hold at this particular point then? Well, I know you were limping around, so obviously you've had some bruises. Nothing yeah. too serious, we hope. Well, I just got a few bruises on my foot. Uh, but the next time I go for it, I'm going to clear it with ease. Right. Time for a nice cup of tea, is it? Just, a, just about, yeah. All righty. <coughs> good to talk to you, Eddie. Take Thanks. care and good luck on the next Thank one. You.